Welcome to the ENT channel. Today we are going to study very interesting case of pseudocyst of the auricle. Auricle means pinna and definition first, it's a benign non-inflammatory swelling of the ear pinna. As you can see in this figure, this is a swelling and it's painless. It has been known by various names like intercartilinous cyst, endochondral cyst, cystic chondromalacia, and benign idiopathic cystic chondromalacia. We come to the cause. It happens with repeated minor trauma like rubbing the ear, pulling the pinna, wearing a very tight helmet, and if you happen to sleep on a very hard bread in a deep sleep, like after a drunk state or after coming a very hard day at work, it may also happen after inflammation of ear cartilage, which is also known as perichondritis. Coming to the epidemiology, it has been seen that Chinese are much more affected. A very strong gender bias has been seen since it's mostly found in males. And males between the age of 30 to 40 years are mostly affected, though it has also been seen from 15 to 80 years, 5 years of age. Without treatment, pinna may develop deformity or infection. And even if we do the treatment, recurrences are common. And the main cause of recurrence is again minor repeated trauma. Coming to the histopathology, it is known as pseudo cyst. Pseudo means false. False why? Because there is no epithelial lining. It is supposed to be a cavity between the layers of the cartilage. And somehow, because of some uh, perivascular inflammation, means inflammation around the blood vessels or something, the uh, cartilage degenerate by some action of eosinophils or some they secrete some fluid. So there is a space formed between the cartilage or sometime between cartilage and perichondrium. So that gives rise to swelling. And if this swelling comes on recurrently, then at later stages we can also get fibrosis and sometimes granulation formation. Overlying skin, dermis and epidermis are absolutely normal. The aim of the treatment is to preserve the anatomical structure like cartilage and to avoid recurrence in the future. Medical treatment is not found to be very successful. Initially, steroids were tried which were given into the lesion and later on even clipping with was done over the pinna to avoid recurrence but uh, it was not very successful. Then repeated aspiration were tried followed by the pressure bandage. Recurrences was seen as early as two to three days and repeated pressure dressing for many weeks was very frustrating experience. Then medical treatment was combined with the repeated aspiration and pressure dressing and the success rate was found to be overall 57%. So, so you, it, was, it was difficult to promise that the swelling will subside with uh, you inject steroid, you do aspirate repeatedly, you do, you do a pressure bandage or you do clipping. So at the most uh, results was only 57%. So it was decided to give go ahead to the surgery. So in the surgery, uh, that swelling was inside and the fluid was drained. And sometime a window was made over the uh, uh, lateral skin flap or anterior skin flap. And then again pressure dressing was done. The problem with this treatment was that cartilage may develop infection very easily. So cartilage should never be exposed. And once if it developed the infection, uh, it takes a lot of time to get cured and cartilage swellings are really painful, really painful. So you have to, uh, so surgery so has to be under very sterile condition, extremely meticulous. Okay. Then other methods were uh, also applied like uh, swelling was incised, surgically curated and then that uh, uh, opening was sealed with a fibrin sealant so that infection do not come from outside. And again, uh, within the swelling, some fibrosing agent like minocycline or trichloroacetic acid was used to obliterate the swelling. But the results were not uniformly good. 
and the main risk was again infection. So after going through my experience of doing surgery where I happened to deal a patient um, develop perichondritis, I discussed with my colleagues and then I developed my own method though it's suggested by my friends. So I used two coat buttons. Then uh, uh, first after aspiration, I just stitch coat button back to back like in a quilting manner and then observe for seven to 10 days. I initially I kept the patient under antibiotic cover and used to call him daily to clinic just to test the pinna to see if it's tender or it has developed infection or not. To my surprise, I did five cases and all were successful and this treatment no incision nothing just a bit of precaution i was able to manage these cases well and all swelling uh, sir, uh, no swelling recurred so thank you just want to share my experience uh, with this button method i hope you also share your experience in the comment box and let me know all questions are welcome thank you mm -hmm.